Thank you for making Locked on Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. On today's show, the Yankees extended their winning streak to 10 games against a good team. That's a good sign. We'll recap the game. We'll preview tonight's matchup between Alec Manoa and Jamison Tyone. And we'll talk about anything else we need to talk about related to the Yankees. All next on Locked on Yankees. You are Locked on Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Yankee fans. This is Stacey Gotsoulias, the host of Locked on Yankees. Welcome to the show. It's Tuesday, May 3rd. The Yankees are riding high on a 10-game winning streak. Yesterday was Glaber Day, and we'll get into it in a second. But first, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Locked on Yankees, all one word. We made it easy for you. You can listen to us on every podcasting platform available, including Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. And when you get into your car or if you're sitting in your room, you can tell your smart device to play podcast, Locked on Yankees. So it was Glaber Day. It was Glaber Day. He had a he had a good night. Drove in all three runs. He basically beat the Blue Jays single handedly, which is you know hey, I know that um, you know the Yankees weren't beating up on the Blue Jays, but it was a good win. You had good pitching, good defense, which is something the Yankees you know they made some of the moves that they made over the off season to shore up that defense and. Of all people, to make a really great defensive play, Giancarlo Stanton. That catch that he made against the wall that John Sterling thought was a home run. I will say I was very nervous just by the way he jumped up and fell down. Because, you know, he has injury history and he's been doing well lately, avoiding that keep knocking on wood because I don't want to jinx him. But I find it funny that Sterling screwed that up. But it's, he's 83. He's going to be 84 on July 4th. And we need to have a conversation about John Sterling and, um, you know, the eventual retirement of John Sterling, but not today. We won't talk about the today. So Giancarlo Stanton made a really good defensive play. Isaiah Kiner-Falefa. I know we weren't happy about the Yankees getting him. I say we because I I complained about it a lot on this show. But you know what? Not that he's shutting me up, okay? Because I did say to give him a chance. You know, he's not going to be a world beater. He's not going to hit 25 home runs. But he's going to hit consistently and play good defense. And so far, so good. He had a bit of a rough start. But, you know, it's kind of... When you come from the Rangers to the Yankees, you grew up liking the Yankees. There's a little bit of pressure on you to perform, and he's doing so much better now. He's one of the Yankees' best hitters if you go by average, although no one really goes by batting average anymore. But I am all for Isaiah Kiner-Falefa. He, I don't care if he only hits singles. (laughs) I really don't. If he's hitting the ball consistently, who cares how far it's going, really? You know, if he hits a single and someone's on second, that'll probably score that run. So, yeah, good for him. And it really improves the infield defense, having him there. So it also helps Glaber because he's not stuck playing shortstop. (gasps) See how that happens. Glaber plays second and he's doing well. Wow. What a concept. How strange. Anyway, Glaber was two for four. Drove in those three runs. Now, the thing I found interesting last night about the Yankees batting, they did not draw a walk at all. (laughs) But the Blue Jays only drew two, and they struck out nine times. Yankees struck out six times. Three of them were from Aaron Hicks. The other three were LeMahieu, Judge, and Rizzo. Let's see. Rizzo did not have a hit. Hicks did not have a hit. Trevino did not have a hit. Everyone everyone else had at least one. And Stanton had a big hit. He set it up for Glaber to score Tim LoCastro, 
who was put in for Stanton because you don't want Stanton running around the bases at that point in the game, top of the ninth, and you need to score a run to go ahead and you're on turf. That also made me nervous, I will say. Um, I always, I can't stand the stadiums with the turf, especially with our big guys and injuries that they've had and even just guys in general, like not even the big ones, all of them. I feel like turf just really screws with some guys and um, it just worries me. So that also worried me with (laughs) Stanton's catch. It just... At least he laughed it off. I will say that made me feel better when I saw him laughing about it. I didn't see any wincing or anything like that. So, yeah, the turf thing is kind of scary. But, you know, he doesn't get that single. And then LaCastro makes it second. And, yeah, so it was a good game all around for the Yankees. You have Torres picking things up. You know, he's he's kind of hot and cold, but... He seems to be hitting the ball when you really need him to. And you need, like, a, a winning hit. We saw it with the walk-off. Uh, not this past weekend, the weekend before. And, you know, good signs from him. And he spoke about it on the post-game show. He was talking about last year and how he wasn't hitting the ball opposite field, which he's doing now. He was grounding out a lot, not lifting the ball. And he's trying to work on that. And, you know, he said that he knows that even if he doesn't do something in the lineup, that someone will b- behind him will pick him up. And I have to say, some of the comments that I'm hearing from these guys makes me really like this team a lot. I know we're only a month in, but there's something about some of the things that they've said in the post games. I spoke about Joey Gallo. I believe I spoke about Joey Gallo saying this after uh, the second game he hit the home run. You know, he had the two games in a row in the homestand. And he said that he, the current clubhouse is one of the best ones he's ever been in, that they're like a family. And I just was like, wow, OK, that's that's something. And you can see it because, you know, like a new guy like Donaldson, you know, Gallo's been here since July of last year, late July. Donaldson's new you know spring training wasn't a long spring training and he has some inside jokes with some of the guys on the team you know like he pulls into second base and makes fun of himself for the way he swung a ball or hit a ball or did something and that just makes me happy but then again they're winning (laughs) so you're gonna see stuff like this you know when the team is losing You don't see this much happiness, but for right now, I'm liking what I'm seeing. And I said this on the show either late last week or was, oh gosh, was it yesterday? No, it wasn't yesterday. I think it was at some point last week I spoke about how I feel like this team could shock the hell out of of everyone and be special. I don't know if anyone else feels that way. And it might just be a product of the winning streak, but I said this before the weekend when they swept the Royals. So at that point it was only six games only, (laughs) but I don't know. There's something I I don't know. I don't want to jinx them. So I'm not going to, I'm going to shut up now. And, uh, (laughs) but yeah, no, things are looking good. Last night was a good game. Good pitching, uh, tidy defense. That's what you want. That's what you want to see. That's how you win. When you have games where the offense is being shut down by the opposing pitcher and they're not getting much done against him, as long as there's one big hit or two big hits, that's all you need sometimes if you have really good pitching and defense. And that's why the Yankees made some of the moves they made over the winter. Now, winter is over. And with spring in the air, it's a time of renewal and growth, personally and professionally. As your small business grows, LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hiring hashtag 
to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Now, if you want to bet, on how the Yankees are going to do tonight against Toronto, you could go to betonline.net because it's your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports development, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs, the start of Major League Baseball season. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. I mentioned the odds for the Yankees to win the World Series and pennant have a improved that's the word i'm looking for since the beginning of last month and i joked that we should check in in june to see how those numbers look so head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action bet online where the game starts thanks for making locked on yankees your number one listen every day for your next listen check out the locked on now podcast where you get recaps of mlb games with analysis from our local experts who are taking fans through the season like no other network it's free and available wherever you get your podcasts so yeah that was a good game last night i enjoyed it i enjoyed it i enjoyed it i also would like to discuss chad green because as soon as they showed him warming up, a friend of mine basically joked that, okay, so the Yankees will be walked off, which is not fair to Chad Green. It really isn't. Yes, he's been struggling a bit, you know, because he had that run where he was just nearly untouchable. And he came in, closed the game, two strikeouts, looked good, got the fly out to end the game. And let's see, the rest of the bullpen did well. Loisaga pitched an inning, one walk, one strikeout. Miguel Castro, two-thirds of an inning, one hit, one walk. He was looking a little iffy. Clay Holmes, an inning and one-third. He picked up the win, gave up two hits, struck out one, and then Green pitched the ninth, got his first save of the season. And that's the other thing I like about the Yankees' bullpen the fact that you could put Chad Green in there to get a save. You could even do Loisaga. And at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if you see Michael King and Clay Holmes take that role when Chapman needs an off day. So, yeah, the bullpen has been amazing. And as I said in the first segment, we're going to do a deep dive on that because they're really helping the Yankees do what they need to do during this stretch. Now... I mentioned this yesterday. We're going to talk about it again. Tonight's matchup. Jamison Tyone against Alec Manoa. Alec Manoa has been incredible. (laughs) 4-0 with a 1.44 ERA and 25 strikeouts on the season so far. In his career, he's 13-2 with a 2.90 ERA in 24 starts. 136 innings, well, 136 two-thirds, with 152 strikeouts and a whip of 1.02. In his last outing against Boston, he won it. Not surprising, because Toronto beat them three out of four. He went seven innings, gave up three hits, no runs, only walked one, struck out seven. And actually, let's see, he... He usually does pretty well with the strikeouts. Uh, (laughs) He had five against Houston, won that decision as well, went six innings. That was on the 23rd. And on the 17th against Oakland, he went six innings. Now, he gave up two runs in each of those starts against Houston and Oakland, but still picked up the win because he's 4-0 and has not lost a decision. So what happens tonight? The Yankees are on a winning streak. Manoa is on a personal winning streak. What gives? Something's got to give. Or maybe 
it's a no decision type of situation. Because last year, the Yankees played a very pivotal series against Toronto at the very end of September. And they beat the eventual Cy Young winner, Robbie Ray, and honestly made him look a little pedestrian. They were hitting home runs off him like it was nothing. (laughs) So if that Yankees team would like to show up tonight, that would be great. But Alec Manoa is a good pitcher. Blue Jays fans were very excited about him when he was coming up because they knew he was a good pitcher and they had a feeling he was going to do well. And so far, so good for him. Um, So it'll be interesting to see who wins the battle. And then Jamison Tyone is up against Manoa. Tyone has looked good. One and one with a 3.26 ERA in, not in, with 17 strikeouts. Sorry. In 19 and one third innings. Now, over his career, you know, he's missed some time with his double Tommy John surgeries. And, you know, the fact that he was back in time was pretty good because that ankle injury that he suffered and, you know, he had to have surgery and rehab from that. And he's been looking pretty, pretty good. So for his career, he's 38 and 31 with a 3.80 ERA in 115 starts. That works out to 629 and two-third innings with 576 career strikeouts. Now, in his last three starts, no decision against Baltimore on the 28th. He only went four and two-third innings. Gave up two runs, seven hits, walked one, struck out four. The game against Cleveland on the 22nd was better. Still only went five, but... That's a couple of weeks ago. Guys are still, wor- at that point, we're still working up to more innings. But one run on seven hits with five strikeouts. And then on the 16th against Baltimore, four and two-third innings, again, <laughs> three hits, two runs, one walk, two strikeouts. So again, it should be something to see <laughs> Who gives in? Do the Yankees continue their streak? Do Alec do? Does Alec Manoa continue his streak? I'm not going to predict anything because I'm bad at predicting things unless they're records for years. I don't know why I'm usually good at that, but no, I'm not going to do that. I'm afraid I don't want to jinx the Yankees for tonight. I just hope that they look okay against Manoa, you know, like last night looked a little rough against Stripling, but I just, I want them to shock the hell out of everyone. So if they could do what they did to Robbie Ray, that'd be great. That'd be really good. So segment three, we'll discuss more about this, but first this episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing only the brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. You can save time and money when using Rock Auto. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and their prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you could need, from brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. So go go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. If you go to the website, rockauto.com, you'll see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in their how-did-you-hear-about-us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. No, I don't want to make predictions. I don't. So let's see how the Yankees... Oh, yes, I discussed this already. The Yankees batters do not do anything against Alec Manoa. DJ LeMayhew has eight at-bats against him, and yes, it's a small sample size, but he does not have a batting average. Neither does Aaron Judge in the same amount of at-bats. Giancarlo Stanton is batting 333 in six at-bats. Joey Gallo is hitting 667 in three at-bats, although I'm not sure if he will be in the lineup because of his groin. So we'll see. And then the Blue Jays against Tyone, 
who is doing the best? Vlad Guerrero. In nine at bats, 333 with a home run and two runs batted in. Matt Chapman, one home run with two runs batted in in only five at bats. And George Springer. Now, George Springer is interesting because in nine at bats, he's only batting 222 against Tyone, but he does have a home run with two runs batted in. So, who's going to hit a home run tonight? I don't know if any Yankees will now. Now I'm worried about this because they don't seem to hit Alec Manoa. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. That might not... That, it, might, it might come to an end tonight, but don't fret. Just remember how nice it was to watch them win 10 in a row. And again, during those 10 in a row, they beat the teams they're supposed to beat. That is the most important thing right now, is beating Baltimore and the Royals and the Guardians and hopefully this weekend, the Texas Rangers. No offense, Bryce Patrick. By the way, we will be recording a crossover. We're supposed to do it Wednesday night. Bryce and I will discuss the upcoming series between the Rangers and the Yankees, and I'm sure he'll be gushing about Joey Gallo, because if you've watched our episodes before, you know that Bryce loves Joey Gallo, but we'll also be talking about IKF and Trevino, so we'll have a lot to discuss. Um, now, I'm trying to remember the other quote. Oh, Tim LoCastro. Tim LoCastro, he said something to the effect of, we're not happy with only 10 in a row. Now, like I said, I am enjoying this clubhouse right now. And I know it's a product of the winning streak. But I'm, I'm enjoying some of these quotes from these guys and how much they like being around each other. I'm going to find the direct quote because I don't want to misquote him. Let's see. See if I can find it. Yeah. We got the win tonight. Tomorrow's another day, and we're going for another win tomorrow. And then he said about himself about being a stolen base weapon off the bench. It's fun, but I'm not in that situation without Giancarlo getting a hit, and then Glaber getting another hit, and then our pitching staff keeping us in every single game. It's a total team effort, and team wins throughout this whole stretch. Amen, Timmy Lowe. I don't know if that's his nickname, but it should be. Yeah. And apparently he gets to the field early just so he can work on his jumps and stolen bases. But hey, you know, it was a bummer last year when he hurt his knee. So and I'm glad that he has the opportunity to help the Yankees out. He's doing a really good job. And let's see, I think the lineup just went up. So let me double check that. Da da da. Or maybe, maybe not. Maybe people on Twitter are, li are lying to me. That's possible. They could be lying to me. Um, but I will say, this team is fun. I'm enjoying watching them. It's not a chore right now. <laughs> and like I said, even if they lose tonight, I'm not going to be upset. Ten wins in a row is great. And hey, if they lose tonight, it's a split. And then they have the rubber game. And do we know who's pitching? Actually, we didn't know who was pitching yesterday in the rubber game. So let's see if the Yankees put that in there. Yeah, Cortez. Why wouldn't it have been Cortez? That's very strange. Why would they not have that up? That's very weird. Um, oh, and this is an interesting stat. The LA Dodgers, the LA Angels of Anaheim, the New York Yankees, and the New York Mets... They're all in first place in their respective divisions. Now that's cool. And I'm trying to think if that's... Oh, yes. First time in Major League Baseball history that all four New York and Los Angeles teams have led their respective divisions for more than one or more than one game into the season. <laughs> that's pretty cool, actually. Um, you know, it probably won't stay that way. But for right now... That's pretty cool. Although I do miss the days of, um, I used to work for a website where we did funny photoshops and we made fun of Anaheim changing their name and we used to call them the Los Angeles 
Angels of Anaheim, San Francisco, Fresno. Like we named literally every major California city and made their name really long. Um, that was amusing. That was the mid 2000s. That's a long time ago. That's a long time ago. So yeah, that's the first time in Major League Baseball history that they're all in first place. Again, it's really early, but that's kind of a fun thing. I like that. Um, Glaber, um, as I said, he spoke with reporters last night because he was the star of the game. It was Glaber Day. Happy Glaber Day. You know, just keep him at second base, Aaron Boone. You're seeing the results of you not messing around with him. And uh, yeah, don't put him at shortstop, please. I mean, if you absolutely need to because something's happening then okay but just don't do it ever <laughs> if you don't need to keep the kid at second base he's doing so much better at second base it's not as uh, scary watching him play defense and I think having Isaiah Kiner Falefa next to him is going to make him better I think having Rizzo at first base is going to make him better and just being surrounded by better defensive players or you know IKF is better um Rizzo's Rizzo's fine at first base he's not a statue he makes some moves he scoops is he's he's pretty good so yeah I think having guys that play good defense will rub off on Glaber and you know it's kind of like the same thing with hitting you know, when guys are all hitting at the same time, it's contagious. And when people are playing good defense, it's contagious. And when you're playing good defense, you tend to hit better. That's always a good thing. And that's good for Glaber. I just want Glaber to do well. I really do. He seems like a sweet kid. And you know that it bothered him that he was struggling so much last year and even in 2020. 2020 was a strange season, though, so I don't really want to count that against anyone or count that for anyone. You know, I always laugh when people talk about 2020 and Trevor Bauer's season, and then that helped him get that crazy contract that <laughs> doesn't matter now because he's suspended for two seasons. Um, so I don't feel like... 2020 is a proper barometer, if you will. But I would love for Glaber to get close to his 2019. He doesn't have to get to that. I mean, 2019 was insane for him and for DJ LeMahieu and basically everyone on the Yankees, because as I've said many times, 103 wins. That's nothing to sneeze at. And considering all the injuries that that team had, it's just amazing that they pulled that off, really. It's a shame they couldn't make it to the World Series and win the World Series. But, you know, considering how that team was, I just, it's unbelievable that they even <laughs> kept their heads above water. It's really amazing. So the Yankees have won 10 in a row. They're looking for number 11 tonight, but their opponent is formidable in Alec Manoa. He's really good. And, you know, he's riding on a personal four-game winning streak, Actually, I don't know if it's more than that because I didn't check last season. If I'm so, we'll just go by this season. He's riding a four game winning streak. Personally, the Yankees are riding a 10 game winning streak as a team. What happens tonight? I'm hoping the Yankees come out on top, but you never know. Then again, baseball is really weird. Again, could be a reverse lock situation. All these guys never hit him usually, and then maybe they will. Maybe. So that's it for this episode of Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'd like to remind you that you can listen to this show in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. And when you get into your car, you can tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On MLB. Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues, both past and present, and it's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. One more thing, if you could be so kind, please rate the podcast and spread the word about this podcast to your fellow Yankee fans. We would really appreciate it. So enjoy your Tuesday. Hopefully you will, and hopefully the Yankees will, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.